From our neighbor Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa has included his son in his cabinet. Kudakwashe Mnangagwa will now join Parliament as Deputy Finance Minister and Economic Development. The 35-year-old's inclusion is part of the youth quota. We're now joined by uh, Nigel Nyamutumbu, independent journalist in Zimbabwe. Thank you very much, Nigel, for your time uh, this afternoon. Perhaps let's start with the composition of the cabinet overall. So, Mtuli Ngube. Uh, retains his position as the finance minister. When he first came in, there was so much expectation, but the economy of Zimbabwe has failed to make a turnaround. Uh, what has been the reaction to his retention in this position? Yes, um, I think uh, the, this uh, uh, new cabinet announcement really uh, sounded more like a, a, a reshuffle of some sort. Um, predominantly um, uh, retaining the core uh, of uh, uh, last year's uh, uh, or the last terms rather uh, cabinet. So what you've got uh, in, is uh, that you, you essentially have uh, uh, your ministers that did not perform very well in the last administration returned in instrumental positions. Uh, Professor Mtuli Ngube, uh, Kirsty Coventry, um, and uh, even others within the Home Affairs Ministry and other uh, critical social provision uh, ministers uh, who despite the evident uh, failures, uh, despite uh, the uh, sustained challenges that the country uh, uh, still faces in respect of the socio-economic and indeed political sphere have still been uh, uh, retained. Uh, so it's, it's been a reshuffle. Yes, there has been a new entry of uh, new players, uh, but uh, with the big story obviously being the appointment of his son to a critical ministry of uh, deputising the finance ministry, um, uh, entry of uh, the Amavetera uh, in the ICT ministry, but predominantly it's uh, been a reshuffle of uh, his uh, inner circle and the core team that constituted his first administration. Let's take a look at the inclusion of his son as the deputy finance minister. What do we know about him and his credentials? <laughs> Well, he's, he's a political novice um, in, in so far as the mainstream uh, politics is concerned. Um, yes, uh, he's been involved naturally in the uh, uh, youth league of uh, the ruling party um, and has been involved in some student activism. Um, but uh, it is uh, at least his uh, appointment has at least three challenges. Firstly, uh, the question of experience. Uh, for you to deputize uh, a finance uh, ministry uh, at a time that the country is really in uh, an economic crisis. In other words, uh, when uh, uh, there is need for experience, when there is need for expertise, when there is need uh, for uh, really exploring and opening uh, of new investment opportunities, uh, you bring in on board uh, someone who does not have any proven track record uh, of not or of repute uh, within the finance sector uh, to uh, then be aiding and assisting uh, the ministry in investment promotion and in, in managing uh, these stringent resources at a time of a global recession um, is, is the first challenge. Secondly, even within the rank and file, of uh, uh, Zanu PF of the ruling party uh, itself, uh, he he is not experienced and strong enough uh, to push back uh, the quasi-physical uh, activities that the Minister of Finance has been pressured. Uh, to, to, to implement um, and where still uh, him the, and the third challenge, him being son uh, to the president uh, makes it uh, more, more a case of uh, nepotism 
uh, have done any well thought out um, uh, you know, ministerial appointment. Mm. Uh, we understand as well that his nephew, Tongai Mnangagwa, is the Deputy Minister of Tourism. Uh, but uh, the leader of the Triple C is that on Sunday, leading into Monday night, um, in a tweet, uh, mentioned that there were some soldiers who were called to State House and they were disarmed. Um, do you have any knowledge of that? Well, what I have knowledge of. Uh, is that indeed uh, since uh, the uh, since voting day or post voting day, uh, there have been rounds uh, by police uh, and in some instances riot uh, police that have been doing rounds uh, predominantly in the streets uh, of uh, the city centre in Harare, uh, and they have. Uh, in the latest incident over the weekend uh, uh, forced the closure of uh, a certain uh, club uh, uh, and with the circumstances uh, not necessarily disclosed um, and it's something that had been obtaining uh, in the lead up to the announcement of results and uh, uh, beyond and uh, what it has been uh, uh, is been led to analysts, uh, you know, uh, dissecting the issue as uh, a paranoia uh, of a potential uh, citizen unrest, um, and also uh, if uh, the events uh, that happened at a football match in Mulawayo uh, between the two biggest football clubs in Zimbabwe was anything to go by, uh, you could tell there is some semblance um, uh, of uh, 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 unrest that perhaps is being curtailed um, and uh, the sooner there is some consensus uh, building or dialogue process uh, to try and uh, 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 build synergies between the government and those that are governing, uh, the better for the country uh, as tensions are still relatively high um, and with the uh, uh, those uh, incidents I was referring to of police uh, closing uh, uh, bars, mm. uh, social events, night sports, and being uh, present, uh, uh, positing uh, those challenges. Mm. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Nigel Nyamutumbu is an independent journalist.